Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here with another tutorial live from Terrain Corner or the Naughty Corner as the wife started calling it. I like quite like that. Okay, this is the first of the Big Burma Build tutorials. Okay, now the Big Burma Build is an ongoing project to build my table for my chin dits, my bolt action force in the Pacific Theatre. So we're talking lots of jungle terrain, lots of villages, streams, all sorts of beaches and all sorts of wonderful things we're going to be doing with it. But this is the very first sort of tutorial. Now this part of the long going project, there's a playlist on it, I'll throw a link up to the intro and if you want to follow along or if you miss bits, you can check it out there. Now this tutorial is split into two parts, yeah? One because it's quite a long one and two because I'm going to be referring back to various elements in future videos. Because we're going to be doing in this video, this part of the tutorial, the basic jungle ground covering, okay, and how we're achieving that and what we want to get out of it. And then in the next part of this video, of this tutorial, which will be coming soon, we'll be covering uh, the actual jungle foliage. Now this is very much not so much a planned sort of tutorial, this is very much, this is my project, my gaming table, you guys are very much along for the ride, and I'm doing my best to show you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it as we go. So, it may not be perfect, I may overdo it in places, I may cheat in places, but it's my table. Yeah, anyway guys, let's get stuck in and make some jungle terrain. Let's crack on, eh? So guys, all good terrain projects start with bases, and I thought before we jump into the actual tutorial and showing you the bits, I'd show you the selection of bases I've got for this project. Now remember, this isn't all the, the jungle bases I'm going to do, this is a long-term project, but right now, these are just my basic scatter terrain jungle bases. Now as you can see, I've got a wide range, yeah, they're relatively small because I want them line of sight block and I don't want them to dominate the table and be absolutely huge. Now what you will notice is these and these. Now over here I've got my standard 6mm MDF, okay? Over here what I've got is, I've got standard MDF model bases. Yeah, the, the things that, you know, you base your models on. Yeah? Now as you can see, all they are is standard bases and they've just been beveled with a Dremel. Okay, and they're attached to blue foam, but attached to pink foam, not blue, colour blind bows. Yeah, and if you have a quick nose, I'll throw a photo up in fact. Yeah, they're actually hot glued screws underneath them and then pushed into the foam. And the reason I do that is it just makes it easier to work with. Yeah, they're, they're very stable, you know, I can work with these. I don't actually have to hold them. In fact, I don't have to touch them until they're completely finished and they're ready to pop off. And so when you've got a strip that's like something like this, you can see how very quickly lots of little bases become really a, a relatively easy job. As I said, I've got lots of scatter bases because I want to get that impression of dense jungle. And that's the reason I've got the small bases as well, because when you use just large bases, you get that island effect where lots of terrain, no terrain, lots of terrain. The smaller bases are to sort of breach that gap and add little scatter elements to give the impression that it is a constant flowing jungle with paths and, you know, outcrops, etc. So... That's the general idea with what you click, with why I've done the bases, why I've got the small bases well mounted on the screws. Uh, moving on, let's talk about actually the tutorial, because that's what we're here to do, isn't it? Right, I'm only going to work on a couple of pieces when we do the tutorial. That's because I'll be able to show you all the techniques on a couple of pieces. Yeah, I've got a couple of corner pieces, side pieces. Obviously, I've got, I work on this block, and I'll work on a, a couple of these small pieces. Now... These are 6 mil MDF, as I said, and they've been initially cut out with a jigsaw. Yeah. After they've been cut out for a jigsaw, they've been roughly sanded with, uh, roughly beveled with a Dremel. And then finally, a quick rub over with 100 grit sandpaper to make them smooth. And I don't want a completely fat be bevel. These, these jungles are going to be overgrown. Yeah, so a lot of the foliage is actually going to come out over the edges of these. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse the sort of hoarse voice. I'm, I'm post, I'm coming off a cold. Yeah, it, it's September, the kids have gone back to school, everyone's got the lurgy. So that's the idea. Now, if you've never beveled bases before, I don't want to go through it in this video because it's something I do in every video. There's a whole list of uh, other tutorials on beveling bases and the type of bevels you can do in the Back to Basics playlist. And I'll throw a link up there. Now what I need to do now is obviously I need to finish beveling and sanding these pieces and then I'm going to come back and we're going to sort of build them up because I don't want flat jungle, I want sort of undulating terrain. 
Yeah, so we'll come back after the transition and I'll show you how we're going to build this up and make them not flat and then we'll move on from there. See you in a moment, guys. Now what we want to do is, specifically with these larger pieces, yeah, is make them undulated. We don't want a flat jungle. And to do that, we're going to be using polystyrene, specifically expanded polystyrene. Yeah, is it, ex sorry, extruded polystyrene. This is expanded polystyrene. Expanded polystyrene is the bubble stuff, okay? Now, you could use this, but we would have to cover it over with something to give it a texture afterwards. And I'm, I'm looking to skip that section in this sort of build. So, in this case, we're going to go for purely the extruded stuff. Now, what I've got here is I've got some 2-inch uh, eco boards, extruded polystyrene. This is insulation. And I've got 10 mil blue craft foam. But what we're going to be doing is cutting bits out of this and adding them onto here, beveled. Okay, and this will give us that substructure for our filler to go over and create that undulating ground. Yeah, so that when we add our plastic plants and all our foliage and everything, it really does grow over the soldiers and, and grow outwards. And it doesn't give that appearance of a flat table. Instead, there's lots of gullies and valleys. So the next job is to grab a shop like this. Yeah, we're going to take this and basically we're going to cut chunks off it. Yeah, I'm going to bevel them down. I'm doing it very roughly, obviously. I don't even know if this will fit one of those bases, but I'm showing you the basic technique. Yeah, and then I'm going to come along, so sort of get the edges, and Mel needs a new blade. <laughs> this is blunt. This couldn't cut blood, butter, so Mel needs a new blade, but basically, we're going to come in, we're going to bevel all these edges down, maybe add a couple of other little pieces onto it. Add this onto our piece like that, and what that will do is it will give us our undulated terrain. Yeah, once we cut all the pieces, we'll be gluing them with, MD with PVA. So I'm going to crack on with that now, get these bits done, and once that's all done, we'll come back and we'll show you some pictures and that sort of stuff, yeah? So, let's crack on. So that's all done as you saw in the example and we've done an absolute load of these bases. Now as I said, when I said we, I've got my friend Antover who's watching sort of learning a little bit about terrain and helping me out with this. Yeah, and keeping me company during these long cold nights. Say hi Ant. Hello. In a terrain building way, you know what I mean guys. Okay, so we've done all these, the PVA is dried, we've sanded them down, they're all stuck down and we've got an, a number of these. We've had a, a couple of little layers on this one. Yeah, uh, pinned in with a pin to make sure it doesn't move. The next job is to make them a little bit more uneven and to blend these edges in. And to do that job, what we're going to be doing is using Das Modeling Putty, which is an air drying clay, cheap as chips and dead easy to work with. Yeah, and my standard uh, household filler, Spackle if you're in the UK. Yeah, I use Dial from B&Q, love the stuff. Now... Yeah, as I said, we'll be using that to fill in these gaps. Now, all this is pretty much going to be covered, but I don't want to risk having any large, identifiable, non-organic lines in it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll put the filler down here. We'll also put the filler across the MDF, this bare MDF, yeah, to seal it. One of the things filler does when it's put down in, in a reasonable amount is it, it prevents the piece warping as well because it stiffens it up. It soaks into the piece. Yeah, so, and it also seals it ready for the painting stage. Now, before we get to that, there is one little exception. Now, obviously, when I showed you this, we had some pink foam. Yeah, we have added a little couple of little bumps onto these things. Yeah, and they're going to look great. We use, what you call it, DAS modeling putty on these as well. Yeah, I mentioned pink foam and I spotted this. That's why I just showed you those. Now, I did say we we're going to use pink foam. Now, the idea for the pink foam is for the larger pieces, okay? Now, obviously, it, I could do it with a blade, it's going to be a large punishing job. So in that case, I'm going to use a hot wire cutter. Now, like I say, you can use it with, with a blade. You can use, what you call it, other foam, thinner foam. You can use polystyrene and cover over it with plaster bandage. 
or papa mache you know there are other techniques and there are there they are all in the hills playlist guys yeah uh, so if you wonder if you haven't got a hot wire cutter or you wonder how you do it there's always alternatives and they're in the playlist but my next job is to cut out the hills that are going well not really hills but more embankments that are going on the corner pieces Ant's going to give a go at what you call it at doing his first proper hot wire cutting and do as one of the side pieces so we'll see how he gets on yeah and as always guys what you're going to do is get a little bit of a fast forward as we we sort of run through these jobs and that sort of stuff yeah so hopefully i'll see you when they're all cut glued puttied and filled. right guys see you shortly let's crack on Right guys, I've cut out my modular hills and there you are, these are my two little corner pieces that you just see me working on. Yeah, uh, with regards to modular hills, I've covered this in the hills playlist, go check that out if you want to know little tips and tricks for doing the modular hills, but I've got my bigger pieces. Next job is actually to blend this foam in, yeah, and for that we were going to use Das Modeling Putty to add some extra little bits, but the only pack I've got has dried out a bit too much, so I'm going to skip that because I can, it's not essential. Yeah, but, filler, now as I said, dial filler... Yeah, standard filler as you can see, it's reasonably thick. And what I'm going to do is get a wedge out yeah, of my fingers, get my piece, yeah, and I'm going to smear it along this line quite thickly. Yeah. I'm going to carry that all the way around, so there you are. Yeah. It's quite difficult doing it and looking in the camera, to be perfectly honest, guys. But let's just do around here. Okay, and the idea behind this is, this is what blends that join in, so you don't get that unnatural step where the foam meets the board. Now, ironically, it's probably going to be covered anyway, you know, with the amount of foliage we're putting on, but this is my set, and so, you know, I want to do this properly, or as proper as I can do it, or as proper as I can do it at, like, 11 o'clock at night, <laughs> which is when I hobby build. All right, so, there's all my basic filler on there, and you can see... Yeah, if I bring that up, that I've been quite rough and ready with it. The next trip is, what do you call it? Dead simple, just a little bit of water, scrap water. Yeah, wet my fingers. Yeah, so we get it all nice and slippy. And you know how much fun it is when they're wetter. Yeah, and just push them around. Yeah, get it all nice and sticky and slimy. And so your fingers slide all over it, just nice and easy. Yeah, there you are, see? Give it a good coating, yeah. So... By giving it a good coating, what you're actually doing is you're sealing the foam and you're sealing the M MDF. Yeah, so that when it comes to painting, it won't soak the paint up. It'll also help sort of counter any warping of the PVA because as it sinks in, it actually makes the foam harder and more rigid. Yeah, so don't be afraid of getting it wet, rubbing it in because it really firms it up. And there you go, guys. Yeah, all I need to do now is leave that to dry. You cannot see where this foam meets this board now. Okay, as you can see, let me bring that in. Yeah. So, I've got loads to crack on with, so we'll get cracked on. Catch them in. Okay, guys, the fill is all dry and these are good to go. I've got a whole load of them here. Yeah, just off camera. Right, let's have a look at this. Now, as you can see, using the filler, yeah, we've managed to completely disguise all our contour lines and give our jungle bases sort of a gradiated, sort of bunched up ground, if you know that sort of effect I'm talking about. So basically they're not flat. 
What I don't want is I don't want a flat jungle. Now the next job we're going to do is we're going to base coat them. Now normally I would go put PVA on this, we'd put grits and rock and that sort of stuff. But because I know that we're going straight to heavy foliage and we're using herbs and that sort of stuff to cut as our covering, there's going to be no dirt showing. So all I need to do is give it a base coat. And for that I'm using standard emulsion paint or latex paint if you're in the US. Yeah, I've got a nice brown, picked it up on like a, a closing deal. It was only a couple of quid. Yeah, so, take the lid off. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the bases first, okay? Because it's a lot easier to base coat the underneath of these bases than it is at this stage than it is to what you've got to do once the whole model's built. Because there's a risk, because you're using quite a lot of paint, there's a risk of it going over and spoiling your model, etc. So we'll give it a quick coat. It will get dirty through the rest of the process, but it's a lot easier to come back later and just touch up a few areas. We're going to be giving, it's probably going to take two, two coats to get the full thing done. Yeah, the first coat though is a little bit of a mix. Yeah, and in that case what we're doing is we're mixing in PVA with our, with our paint. And we're going for a ratio of about 10 paint to 1 PVA. And that's just to help it bind, yeah, and sort of seal itself. So, little spoot label. Yeah. And in we go. Yeah. Okay, I'll throw that down there, so if I bring that up. Yeah, and I want about, <laughs> if it would open, come on, take the top off. Back in a sec. Sorted. Right, so we're putting in about a 1 to 10 ratio. Yeah, so that's about right. Yeah, and the next thing is obviously give it a good mix. So there we have it. It's all mixed up. It does lighten the paint a little, yeah, but it won't affect the final drying colour. Okay, and what I'm going to do is dead simple. It's painting, isn't it? Yeah, one inch brush. Yeah, and just slap it on. Yeah, like I say, these are the bases. I'm not really worried about getting it perfect. I'm going to be given a second coat. So the first coat over the whole thing you do with this 10 to 1 PVA paint ratio mix thingy. Yeah, when you do the second coat, just go for normal PVA. Go straight out of the tub for that one. Yeah. So I'm going to get cracked on. And to be perfectly honest, you don't need to see me just paint these. So I'll probably just throw a couple of pictures up as I go, just so you can see what they roughly look like. And we'll come back when it's all painted and it's all dried. Yeah. Have a good weekend, guys. I'll see you in. I'll see you in a second. But camera-wise, I'll see you once I've got this done. Okay, these are all base coated up now, and as you can see, it's a nice solid base coat on the top and underneath. Okay, and the reason I've moved around to this side of the workbench, and you're seeing all my other little lovely bits that I've got, yeah, is the other side is literally ramp packed full of these, yeah, stand on little paint pots ready to have PVA glue and the foliage put down on them, which is the next step. And the next step is adding the foliage. Now, I'm basing my Burma table in sort of post monsoon season, and that means that the ground will be very muddy, lots of uh, dead foliage falling off on the tracks. So around the edge I want to do sort of a muddy, leafy sort of effect. And to achieve this, yeah, what I'm going to be using is mixed herbs. Yeah, and that's just loads of different mixed herbs thrown in, anything that looks leafy. And I've got to say, it does smell lovely. Yeah, and all we're going to be doing is gluing it down with PVA, then sealing it in, then staining it with what you like, watered down uh, base colour paint. Yeah, which will give us that muddy look. Okay, very quickly, if I show you now, let me grab one of John's and one of mine. Yeah. Now, the lads are over this weekend to play ball action, and here are a couple of the minis. Now, the chindit is obviously mine. Uh, the marine with the bar is... John's and if you notice yeah we've used the same sort of effect on those so that's what we're going for okay the idea of gluing the, these uh, herbs down stain well sealing them then staining them yeah to get that really sort of jungle muddy sort of effect so let's crack on with that so okay glue of choice 
obviously PVA, yeah, I've got a brush, got a little bit of water there, I've got a cloth there. I put paper down, if I'm standing on, on tubs, that's that way. As I do the PVA in, it's not going to sort of stick to the paper. You know, if it was down here, then the glue would stick to the paper. It'd be a right mess. So, just put it on little stands, and obviously, I've got my herbs. So, all I'm going to do, and when I do this, I'm not going to cover the entire base. I'm just going to do an inch around. Okay? So, I start quite high up and work towards the edge. The reason being is if I start at the edge, gravity will run off the edge and it will drop straight off. Whereas if I start high, I can sort of control the PVA. And I don't want too much PVA on my paper. Yeah, because then all the leaves, that, all, the, all the mixed herbs that fall off will stick to my paper and it'll just get messy. Now, you know, I do like messy, but... Yeah. One thing I am quite crucial about getting is getting the edges. Yeah? Because I don't want this brown showing through. I want it to go straight down. Yeah, now it's looking quite thin there, so I'll top that up in a minute. Yeah, but I'm just going around and getting a good coverage all the way around. Be very careful to make sure I do get those edges. Yeah, and a little bit of topping up just down this side. That was a little bit thinner. I think we're good to go. Right. Yeah, it is just a simple matter of scattering your herbs on. I'm going quite heavy because I can pour it off, use the paper to pour it back into the tub. Yeah, now dropping it down you'll get most of on top and just as it comes over the edge, but you won't get the horizontal edges. Yeah, so in that case, Handful in your hand, yeah, just stabilise the piece and just come round and sort of tap them in. You will have to pick more up. See, this is why I didn't want loads of PVA dripping down on my paper because I can scoop up the herbs and just come along and just push them into that edge. When you've got round bits, yeah, this is a bit awkward because of the angles that sort of cut in. But when you've got round bits, and what I'll do is I'll show you now, is... You can sort of come along and say, right, I need it there, that edge, and literally just do that. Yeah, I need a bit more there. Yeah, fill it over. Yeah, so there's quite a lot on. Yeah, tap it down, because that way you're not actually touching any bits that are glued. You're just using pressure, and that'll fill it up quite nicely. And a little bit more there, so same technique. Fill it over quite thickly so you don't actually touch anything that's got glue. Yeah, press down on all the loose bits and that'll translate and fill those. And do a bit more there as well. You see I'm a bit over paranoid with this because this is my set. Yeah, and quick check around the book there. Oh, yeah, and there we go, guys. So give that a shake. Let me bring that up to the camera for you. Yeah, so you can immediately see how this is going to blend in that board. And remember, I'm using this texture on my gaming boards. Yeah, so it's going to look beautiful. Right, guys. Obviously, I've got a load of these to do, so I'm going to crack on. I'm going to, we're going to get all these sort of polished up, and then the next job will be to seal them with some PVA. Now, you probably just see photos for that because there's nothing really special. I'm just going to spray them with a mixer, probably uh, one third PVA, two thirds water, yeah, and a little bit of flow aid in. Right, I'm going to crack on. See you in a minute. Right, the herbs are all dry now, and if I bring that up so you can see. Yeah, we've got a lovely sort of jungle coat into our piece. Yeah, now the next job I need to do is quickly fix these in place. Now typically we wouldn't seal a piece 
until we've actually finished it, it's all painted up, all the foliage is on and then we seal it. But because these are herbs, yeah, and they're very lightly scattered, so there's lots of them which are only very lightly tacked down, I want to give it a quick thin coating of watered down PVA just to hold those in place while we do the rest of our work on it, yeah. And to that end, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using an airbrush. Now, you don't need an airbrush to do this. You can use something like this, which is an atomizer, a spray bottle. Yeah, I, for years I've used, what you call it, uh, a cheap one-pound bottle of window wash. And just clean the bottle out of the bottles brilliantly. But I want a little bit more control over these pieces, which is why I'm using an airbrush. Okay, now I'm keeping it really simple. I'm using a Hornby airbrush. These are about 10, 15 pound. It's a single action external no it's not external is it external i'm not i think it's an external mix yeah but it's a siphon feed and this is the cleanest way of bulk putting out watch what watch water down pva my pva is just bog standard pva and it's mixed at a ratio of sort of one part pva to four parts water so 20 percent pva okay now very quickly what i'll do is i'll just spray it here so you can see it going down yeah, and as you can see, it's a real fine line. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so it's time to actually crack on and spray this. So here we have it, guys. Yeah? I bring it up nice and clear. You can see the PVA on it, but it is so thin. But that's all I need to fix this down. Now, I could have used a brush and just brushed it on, but the problem with using a brush with things like very loose scatter like this is when you hit it with a lot of water, you can loosen the PVA, you can wash the bits off. So a nice thin coating is, is what I'm after, and the airbrush gives me the ability to put that down, but don't think you've got to have one. Right, all I've got to do now is leave this to dry. These are all sealed and dry now, and if I pick it up, you can see, yeah, next to it, you'll still get the odd little bit come off, you know, until it's completely sealed. But for the mainstay, it's all fixed and it's all firm and it's all dry and, and sort of brittly, which is what we want. Now, the next stage is obviously these are just natural herbs, and we need to make them look like jungly mon post monsoon mud, yeah. And so, yeah, what we're going to be doing is adding a wash, yeah, to take them from that. Yeah, to that. Okay? Now, this is a dead easy, it's going to be a dead simple wash. I mean, it's not even a proper wash because it's got no flow aid in it. All we're going to do is we're going to water down some of our base paint, yeah, and then just simply flood the area, yeah, and that will stain it, okay? I won't paint it out completely, we'll still get the texture, we'll still get the lightness, etc., like we've got on this piece here. Yeah, so if you can see, it hasn't painted it out. You can still see the herbs, but they're all brown and it looks all muddy, which is what we're after. So, let's mix up our bit of a wash. Now, all I'm using is what a little bit of water. Yeah, I'm going to add that in. And I'm going to mix it up, obviously. And I want to keep going until there's no sort of sloppy bits left in. Yeah, and then have a quick look at it. Now, do you see on the edge? Do you see how that's completely solid and I put it down? Yeah, that's too thick. A bit more water. Yeah, and if we go now and put it on, you start to get the translucence and that's what we're after. Yeah, I'll probably say a little bit more actually. See how it's going up the side, and as it drains down, it goes thin. You can just see a smearing. Yeah, that's what we want. So, right, next bit is dead simple. All we're going to do is simply just put it onto our piece. But there's a technique to it. Don't start at the bottom and work up. Start at the top and let it flow down towards the edges. Because what you've got to remember is when you put this sort of amount, this sort of water onto it, there's a chance you can reactivate the PVA. There's my phone. Someone wants me. Later, I'm busy making terrain. 
when you put this much sort of water on it there's a chance of reactivating the PVA and what can happen is you can literally wash your herbs off yeah so put the PVA on at the top okay let it drain down and never really go over a bit you've already done yeah because once it's wet that's when it'll be loosest so just leave it as it is let it redry and this will firm this piece up even more yeah so forget it yeah and you see how I'm dabbing it in yeah I'm not stroking it yeah I'm just dabbing it on and pressing it in yeah once the water soaks in it'll start to carry itself down there we go now you may wonder why I'm not doing this with an airbrush since I sealed it with an airbrush yeah for some reason I've always struggled with browns go you know house paint browns going through my airbrush they always seem to gunk up I don't have any problems with any of the other colors it's just brown yeah and so we, res we resort to tried and tested methods now let me bring that up to the camera so you can get a nice good look at that where it is without licking paint everywhere but do you see the difference okay now I know it looks very it doesn't look very dark right now okay and it looks a bit stained around the edges that's perfectly normal it will dry darker yeah I know this yeah it's exactly the same technique that I used on my model bases I know this is how, how this is going to work out so I'm going to crack on finish this and then do the rest and I'll see you once that's done and there we go just before I oh it's dripping on me right there you are just before I disappear off it's going to look great guys trust me these are all dry now and they've turned out beautiful guys so if I hold it up yeah perfect jungle some post monsoon season ground yeah and you can even notice that because we put that bevel in that this this gradient the pigment has washed down and collected around the edges giving it a really natural look of like muddy in the lowlands and sort of a little bit more dried out towards the top okay and if you take a look at these yeah now obviously these are low bases so I've, I've, I've applied extra pigment to these to sort of really blend them in another good example is this one here in fact no these yeah, with this one you can see exactly how it's rolled down and this is exactly what we were going for because this will blend into our sort of our muddy monsoon board really well okay now there's only a last little bit of a job to finish these off yeah and all it is is dead simple I'm gonna do it in a minute but I'll talk you through it now, if you take a look at them you can see that they've got like these scraggy ends these little bits sticking out just go along with your thumb and just push them in yeah they will be a little bit what you call it you'll be able to do it they won't be rock solid okay and then rub underneath pick up any what you call it and what you're doing is basically these are the edges that are going to be handled okay so they're going to be messed with anyway so by pushing them in just cleans the piece up and makes it a bit more of a modular piece well not modular piece but I like it if you know what I mean and like I said this is my terrain set yeah so if I quickly hold it up so you can see the difference that makes yeah looking down on it very little but if I bring it round there you can see how it's much tidier and it's gonna be much nicer just to pick up and that sort of stuff I'm not gonna to have to worry about bits breaking off etc remember we are going to seal this later in the process now when we talk about later in the process yeah I'm gonna draw a line on this part of the tutorial now because this covers the basic foliaging yeah a basic sort of ground covering that we're going to be doing on all the Burma projects or the vast majority of them yeah and so I'm going to be coming back to this as sort of a reference remember I'm, I have to finish that one off yeah so guys yeah keep your eyes out for part two it'll be coming really soon yeah we're going to be working with all these materials to make these jungle bases really really cool so in the meantime obviously guys liked it if you liked it yeah share it if you know anyone who's making jungle terrain a pacific theater alien jungle terrain any jungle terrain yeah and they think they may find it helpful yeah always any tips any experience any questions that's what the comments for guys you know I always answer my comments so jump in there and let's get chatting and finally if you really do like what I do yeah consider checking out patreon and tipping me a book a month yeah it all goes on camera kit and lights and things to make the tutorials better yeah but 
If you're not up for that, don't worry, because we're going to crack on regardless. So, I'm going to leave you with that, and I will see you in part two, guys.